What are the side effects of creatine? Most people know that creatine is an effective supplement for putting on muscle and building strength, but the side effects are often not talked about, swept under the rug, or left to speculation. Especially the effects that creatine can have on your brain, which nobody seems to be talking about. So what does science have to say about the side effects of creatine? First of all, let's just get the basics out of the way. Creatine is not a steroid. It's not going to make you blow up and put on pounds and pounds of muscle just by taking it. In fact, on its own, it's not going to do much of anything for you. Creatine is basically like a little shuttle that helps bring energy to your muscles when they're tired during a workout. And this means that you're able to push a little bit harder, do a couple extra reps, or even another set. And over time, this can lead to building significantly more muscle than if you had never taken it in the first place. So it's not going to magically put on any muscle. You still have to put in the work. It just makes it a little bit easier to do so. But what else does creatine do to your body? What are the side effects of this stuff? Let's start with the kidneys. There's a lot of people out there who are claiming that taking creatine is bad for your kidneys. This probably comes from a couple of case studies, some over 20 years old, where a few individuals taking creatine ended up having kidney problems. However, according to more recent studies on these cases, the results were confounded by medications, pre-existing kidney disease, inappropriate creatine dosages, sometimes up to 100 times the recommended dose, and anabolic steroid use. A recent 2021 article which compiled all the major findings on creatine supplementation found that overall in healthy individuals there appears to be no adverse effects from consuming recommended dosages of creatine supplements on kidney or renal function. So probably not much to worry about with the kidneys if you're taking recommended dosages and don't have any pre-existing conditions. But what about baldness? This is a huge concern for a lot of young men who want to take creatine but are worried that it's going to accelerate their hair loss. Again, these claims are likely to come from a single study in the early 2000s where a test group of rugby players who were supplementing with creatine were found to have increased levels of DHT, a hormone that is sometimes linked to hair loss. Although it's important to note that strength training alone is enough to increase DHT levels because DHT is made from testosterone, and that the increase in DHT levels in these rugby players was still within normal clinical levels. And since that study, at least 12 other studies have examined the effect of creatine supplementation on these hormones. And 10 out of these 12 studies found no increases in these hormones, giving us plenty of confidence that creatine will not lead to accelerated hair loss. All right, next up is water retention. This one is a little bit more controversial and the science isn't quite as black and white. Many people that take creatine say that it makes them super bloated and makes them hold on to a ton of water. A common reason that people will experience bloating or a big increase in weight when taking creatine is that they tend to upregulate their level of water intake at the same time. People will do things like double the amount of water that they drink throughout the day because they've heard that this prevents kidney problems and that they have to do this in order for the creatine to work. And the result is that they end up blowing up with a ton of water weight and they start feeling super bloated. Now the creatine may have played a tiny role in this, but it's more than likely that the increase in water intake itself was the cause. There's been tons of studies on water retention and creatine, with most of them showing that there's no significant increases in water retention when water intake is controlled for. But creatine is technically osmotically active, so it's possible that some people's bodies just react differently and tend to hold on to more water than other people. Okay, last but certainly not least, how does creatine affect your brain? This is a relatively new area of research for creatine, but there have been studies on how creatine affects your mood, memory, and even intelligence. An article from a few years ago that included six other studies remarkably found that creatine may improve short-term memory and intelligence slash reasoning of healthy individuals. Now the trials and effect sizes were pretty small, but most of them found clinically significant differences in at least one domain of memory or cognitive function compared to a placebo. So it's not likely to make you a super genius or give you a perfect SAT score, but if you're already taking it for muscle building, it's not a bad side effect to have. And by the way, our favorite creatine is actually from Amazon and we'll link it down below. So all in all, creatine has been shown through thousands of studies to be safe and effective for almost everyone. Of course, consult your doctor if you're worried about anything, but it might be worth a try if you've been thinking about it. If you guys want more information on the benefits of creatine and what happens when you take it long term, I I recommend you check out this video here where I describe what happens when you take creatine for over a year and we'll see you next video.